Hey, welcome back. This is my software journal. My name is Ronald, and the topic of the day is how did I make 100K plus as a software engineer? Let's just hit into that first point, getting right into it. First way to achieve that tight salary as a software engineer, you have to make major impact. By making major impact, it can mean different things, but I'm just gonna hit a couple of points for you. Make complicated stuff look simple. I've seen it so many times in my career when I've done stuff, and it was like, yo, how do you make that process so simple as just clicking a button and does some stuff in the background? I mean, it was just, you know, a couple of hours. You gave me some requirements. You gave me certain constraints and some use cases. When you hit that button, uh, there you go. I mean, that's pretty much it. When you make things look as simple as that, you provide so much value to the company. You provide so much value to the customer. It's always about value to the customer, always to the business. If you can do that, it's like, you're so valuable. When you make major impact, you're saving company time and money. Also, you're saving the customer time and money as well because when they're looking at you, they're like, oh, thank you for so much for, like, I thought this was going to be, like, way stretched out. I thought the timeline, the deadline is going to be way stretched out, but it's actually this much. And thank you so much for providing so much value. We're going to come back to you, give you some more money because you did such a great job. Hey, thank you. Uh, make sure I continue to do that. All right, so the next part is, you know, lead major initiatives. These major initiatives could be just like the start of a project. A lot of people are not, you know, familiar with this side of, of software or something like that. For instance, like whenever the time was for me to actually learn Salesforce, this, the last startup that I was working for, it was like, hey, we need someone to do Salesforce. We got this customer who's heavily on a Salesforce tip thing. All right, I looked up, what is Salesforce? How much Salesforce developers make? Hey, all right. Oh, what do you do most of the time? Point and click stuff? Okay, that's nice. When I looked at that and the Salesforce project came up, took lead on it and provide so much value to the customer, so much value to the business. I was like, all right, that's great. I'm learning a new skill. I'm also getting compensated for what I'm doing by learning more stuff and also moving to the next level. Because essentially as a software engineer, you just gotta be able to be adaptable. When you're able to lead initiatives, you gotta be adaptable, you gotta be able to be confident in order to take on new challenges. When you're able to put more challenging stuff on your plate, business looks at that, they're gonna compensate you in the long run. And also, like I like to think of it like this, when I do those type of stuff, I'm actually improving my skill set and making myself more marketable and more valuable to other people that I might want to go to because I'm always looking, man. <laughs> nah, uh, yeah. All right, so the next part of this, the second part, and increase my value. So that is a good transition over. By learning new stuff outside of work, that's, that's it's so important. I can't stress that enough. It's like, you might be set on doing certain stuff at your job, but then there might be a time where you have to move and look at something else. And if you get so stuck in a certain way of doing things, then you get so stagnant and that's when you become very rigid. Like I said, you gotta be able to be adaptable, formidable. And when you have that malleability to you know, learn new stuff, learn new skills, and makes you more viable as a person and make you more mar marketable. Hey, don't be stuck on that Java stuff because just learn the concept of what is a OOP language and you'll be able to go to the next level and just learn another language. You just need to learn the syntax and how their stuff works. Learning new stuff is very important. That's how you're gonna increase your value as a software engineer. The next part of that is build projects. Actually build stuff that kind of like solidifies your knowledge of what you're actually doing. When you look at these projects later on, like when you're in your repository or in your notes or some kind, you will see that you've learned certain skill sets outside your work or inside your job that would help you make you more confident as a software engineer. Another part of increasing your value is getting your certs. And I'm probably going to be an evangelist for Salesforce like all the time. I received a Salesforce cert that essentially was like pennies to what 
I'm earning now. And I didn't even have to pay for it. I just recall so many other people who did certain stuff in order to like solidify their knowledge in a certain space. They they were such a matter of experts and people actually looked at them a little bit differently. So when you have certs and stuff like that, especially if you're doing certain technology in a certain space, it gives you more foundation of how to use that particular platform or technology. The next point, the third point, and the most important part probably is networking. I can't stress this enough. You already heard the sayings, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. Alright, go to meetups. There's uh, so many different meetups out there. I know Google has a sandbox I went to a couple of times. It's, it's a great, great place to get free food. One, it's a great way to talk to other developers and software engineers. I met CEOs, presidents, uh, startups and stuff like that, dealing with game development, dealing with like working for you know military entities and stuff like that. And they gave me so much knowledge on, all right, where, where, where can I go in this software career? Talk to people and see where what they're doing because that's going to give you a more knowledgeable understanding of where where is the software um, career is going and what skills that you actually need in order to be where you need to be for certain companies. So you know, like I went to the Google Sandbox, like I was telling you, talked to those different people, and it gave me a sense of okay, this this is what they're asking for. Okay, cool. And there was also recruiters there, so they gave me their cards, and I'm like, yeah. Thank you, I'll probably give you a call. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, let's do it. Cool. It gives you another sense because it's not just the meetup is for like Google, for instance, like with the sandbox. You can see if other people, like startups, are actually hiring because they use that opportunity to see other developers and see skills that they have that they might be able to utilize for their business see who's hiring these days and see why they're hiring um, it's a good way to network and all that other stuff because essentially what networking is is how much can i get from you and vice versa right that's that's how i consider networking and pr provide value to people and as much as they provide value to me it's, it's a continuous back and forth trade the last point i thought the last one was the stress one but this is the last stress one that i want to say Always be on the lookout. What do you mean by that? Always be on the lookout. Business are always on the lookout every quarter on how to increase their profits. So why are you not trying to do the same thing for yourself? When you go back in a quarter, you see how much knowledge and how much expertise you gain in this space. You, you might go on Indeed or some job search website, put in an application, you put in your resume, you send it out to them. You might be very surprised what you might get in return sometimes doubling or tripling your salaries. Don't look at the salary in the sense of that because then you also have to consider area where you might possibly have to go for that salary. You have to look at you know living conditions and all that stuff, cost of living. I always want, I wanted, I wanted this as a way of like, hopefully a company would be my family kind of thing. But ultimately, it's like when times get rough, things get stressful, the company is going to like, hey, what are you doing? Are you doing your job? And then you get those tight moments and it's like, Ew, you, you know, I've been here for years and all this other stuff. So always, always look at that aspect of things. It's like your company is not your family. So don't ever get comfortable. I always hear this from like, you know, people in the industry. Always look for a job every two years in this career. And there's a reason behind that is because either like your skill set is become obsolete or they got the value that they wanted out of you and they're just gonna let you off kind of thing it's just uh sometimes the hard truth you can get some security sometimes when you're dealing with certain entities and businesses um such as like government jobs you also got to be flaky about about those because i work for those as well you might hit a very hard point where budgets are being solidified for stuff but it hasn't passed yet and then people go on furlough you heard of that before so people not getting paid for doing the work they're doing and that can suck very much so that's essentially it i hope you guys got some value from that make sure you guys Hit that like, subscribe, and you know, until next time.
Peace.